This ship was built to survive the most brutal waters on Earth. It weighs 21,000 tons and it's an icebreaker. The Zhue Long, or Snow Dragon, was on a mission to rescue a Russian research vessel stranded in Antarctic ice. But before it could reach them, it stopped. Wind-packed, multi-year sea ice had frozen solid around the hull. The rescue mission was aborted, a helicopter was launched, and for several days the icebreaker itself was trapped, immobile. The rescue ship had become the one needing rescue. Despite powerful engines and reinforced steel, the Zhui Long couldn't free itself. And that's not because it was broken, but because the ice was simply too much. Three meter thick sea ice, compressed by wind and current, had locked it in place. This wasn't open water or first year ice. It was a frozen wall, moving, growing and solidifying around the ship. The Shue Long was rated for moderate conditions, but what it faced here was well beyond its design class. Because icebreakers don't plow through ice like a snow truck, they climb on top of it and crush it under their own weight. And how well they do that depends entirely on how they're built. From the shape of the hull to the power of the engines to how the steel flexes under pressure. So what makes an icebreaker an icebreaker? and which ones are the best in the world. Icebreakers aren't designed to smash through ice head on. Instead, they ride up using their own weight to crush the ice from above. It's a simple idea, but what makes it work is anything but simple. The shape of the hull is everything. Most modern icebreakers use a spoon-shaped bow, curved and scooped, built to climb onto the ice and collapse it under the ship's weight. It's the most effective design for thick, multi-year ice. Some older vessels still use V-shaped hulls which split the ice instead of crushing it. They're less effective in extreme conditions, but more efficient in thinner ice. And then there are the rare oblique hulls designed to move sideways through the ice, carving wider channels for other ships. They're highly specialized and used in very specific conditions. Hull shape is just the start. Because to move through solid ice, you also need serious power and precision. Many modern icebreakers are powered by azimuth thrusters, also known as azipods. They can rotate 360 degrees, allowing the ship to pivot, reverse and carve paths in any direction. When you're surrounded by ice on all sides, maneuverability is everything. Some ships also use air bubble systems, pushing compressed air under the hull to reduce friction and help slide past stubborn ice. It's not standard on every ship, but it's becoming more common as designs evolve. And when forward progress fails, modern icebreakers are often designed to go in reverse. Their sterns are reinforced, shaped to crush ice from behind when needed. It's not a backup plan, it's part of the operation. Some newer ships are double acting with both the bow and stern optimized for ice breaking. They can switch directions mid-mission depending on what the ice demands. None of this works without power. The most capable ships like Russia's nuclear icebreakers have more than 60 megawatts of shaft power, enough to push through three meters of dense multi-year sea ice at a steady speed. And all of it, hull, propulsion systems is wrapped in layers of reinforced steel to survive below freezing temperatures and constant impact. Because when your job is to break the ice, the last thing you want is to break yourself. And some ships do it better than others, from polar class giants fueled by nuclear reactors to research vessels charting untouched routes across the Arctic, these are the best icebreakers on Earth and what makes them truly exceptional. Part of Russia's powerful Project 22220 nuclear fleet, the Chukotka is designed to operate in the thickest sea ice on Earth, up to 2.8 meters. Powered by two RITM-200 nuclear reactors equipped with dual draft capabilities, it can switch from deep Arctic seas to shallow estuaries. Each ship in this class costs over $720 million, and Russia is building several more to secure the northern sea route. The Yakutia joined the fleet in late 2024 as the newest addition to Project 22220. It shares the same nuclear propulsion and dual draft system as Chukotka. Despite heavy sanctions, Russia continues to scale production. The estimated cost? 
also over $700 million, making these among the most expensive non-military ships ever built by Russia. China's Xuelong-2 is its first domestically built polar icebreaker, an engineering milestone. It's powered by four Vatsilia diesel engines connected to ABB Azipod thrusters, delivering over 20 megawatts of total power. With her Polar Class 3 rating, it can break through 1.5 meters of ice at three knots in both forward and reverse. It reportedly cost around $300 million, part of China's push for permanent access to both the Arctic and Antarctic. Commissioned in 2009, Japan's Shirasei was built for Antarctic research. It uses a diesel-electric propulsion system and displaces about 20,000 tons. The ship cost approximately 38 billion yen, about 350 million US dollars, and remains Japan's most significant investment in polar science. Despite its high cost and technical capabilities, Shirasei has faced extreme operating conditions, including running aground in 2014 near an Antarctic base. The Healy is the US Coast Guard's flagship research icebreaker. It can break through 4.5 feet of ice continuously and up to 10 feet using backing and ramming techniques. Built for around $325 million in the late 1990s, it remains America's most capable Arctic vessel and a reminder of how far behind the US has fallen in large-scale icebreaker construction. It was the first unaccompanied American ship to reach the North Pole in 2015. Canada's next-generation icebreaker, unofficially nicknamed the Polar Max, is still under construction but already making headlines. Designed by Finnish experts and built in Vancouver, it's rated for Polar Class II conditions and will break through 2.5 meters of ice at three knots. Canada is investing 8.5 billion Canadian dollars in the program for just two ships, an extraordinary cost that includes design, construction and future operations. Once complete, it will be one of the most powerful icebreakers outside of Russia's nuclear fleet. All of these icebreakers set a new benchmark for what's possible in icebreaking technology. As we look into the future, it's clear that the icebreaking technology is evolving continuously. So what's next for these giant ships that dare to tame the ice? After decades of falling behind, the U.S. is now racing to re-establish its polar presence. The polar security cutter is set to become the Coast Guard's most capable icebreaker in half a century. At $1.03 billion for the first ship alone, this is a bold, high-stakes investment. Stretching 460 feet long and displacing over 23,000 tons, it's being designed with hybrid propulsion, one centerline shaft and two azimuthine podded propulsors. That combination allows it to operate efficiently in both open water and dense Arctic pack ice. But the program is already delayed. The design was only 67% complete as of 2024, and with no heavy polar icebreakers built in the US since the 1970s, it's a massive learning curve. The total projected cost? $5.1 billion for three vessels, with long-term operating costs expected to exceed $12 billion over their service life. Meanwhile, Russia is building what could become the most powerful icebreaker in history. The Rossiya, the lead ship of the leader class, is designed to deliver a staggering 120 megawatts of propulsion power, twice that of the current Arktika class. It's powered by two RITM-400 nuclear reactors, each producing 315 megawatts of thermal output. And it's designed to crush through ice over 4.3 meters thick, with a potential for up to 5 meters under optimal conditions. The vessel is 209 meters long, weighs over 70,000 tons, and is being assembled using giant prefabricated blocks, some lifted into place by Russia's largest Goliath crane. But even this mega project isn't immune to delays. As of late 2023, it was just 11.4% complete. And now, China is entering the nuclear game. Following the success of the Xuelong 2, China is developing its first nuclear-powered icebreaker. At an expected cost of 1 billion yuan, around $150 million, it's far smaller than Russia's nuclear giants, but symbolically significant. It's reported to have a 38,000-ton displacement, dual ABB as a pod propulsion, 
and the ability to operate in three-meter-thick ice, on par with Western diesel-electric designs, but with the endurance of nuclear power. This isn't just about science, it's about strategic presence, year-round polar access, logistics control, and geopolitical signaling. From nuclear propulsion to AI-assisted navigation, the next generation of icebreakers is already taking shape. Russia's mammoth leader class, the US's long-awaited polar security cutters, and even China's first nuclear icebreaker. These ships aren't just built for science, they're built for strategy, for year-round access, for a polar future that's getting harder to predict. Because no matter how advanced they become, even the best icebreakers can still get stuck. Thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed, make sure to like and share, and please subscribe for more Mega Build stories.